Hey guys, meet Temperance. She has four horses and three ponies. The horse that she's running in this video, his name is Slotty. It has been a long time since I've seen a horse go that fast. Thank you so much for sending in your video. Good morning, guys. Welcome to today's video. Today, I have a story that I need to tell you, and I need to ask your opinion. Uh, Sylvia and I, and Sam, can you guys see the smoke? Are down in the barn doing chores this morning. I want to, I woke up early and have energy. So I wanted to take a few minutes and like straighten up all the things that have been getting messy the last few days. But last night, yeah, sure. I'll film honey coming out. Everybody's already seen it so many times, but Sophie's so excited about it. <laughs> She's so furry. No. I know, we don't like it, but these are the rules. <laughs> please, mom, please. <laughs> She's so sneaky. Stay. Stay. You stay there. Okay, let her go. Good girl. <laughs> She's mad. How dare you? I will make you move your feet don't, now. Don't do it. No. You do this every morning, honey. Your foot's outside. Go outside. Is she going to run and buck? <laughs> She's like, where's the food at? Oh, there's food. Okay, good girl. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. You've had your food, sister. You've had your food. You have to go out and eat. It's like, hmm, can I have some of this food that's in here? She's so bald. Oh, she's so scared. She's so scared. <laughs> she's like, eh, I know Penny's not going to share. Nope. Now what can I do, she says. Uh-oh. Oh, the oh, first time Penny actually made her go away. Yeah. But do you see how, like, none of our horses are really mean to her? They just tell her. Gracie just accepts that she's a baby. Gracie, so she's like, oh, I'm gonna get my mom's. <laughs> oh, hi, Ollie. Oh, you see Ollie? Oh, <laughs> look at Ruby. Ruby's like just barely shorter than her. Anybody who's been asking, do you still have your cat? I don't know if you can see him, he but like he's so there. He's he has so a bed up there that's like nice and warm and cozy, so he stays up there. A lot, he's afraid of the dogs. He doesn't want to come down when we're here because of the dogs. Okay, so here's my story. Here's the story, I need your opinion. Last night before I went to bed, I read on Facebook. I was just scrolling online and I saw this thing on Facebook and it was such a controversial thing. Sophie, I'm gonna ask you too. Mm -hmm. This lady said, <laughs> this lady posted, a trainer posted on on one of the equestrian sites and said like I have this client and her parents and they ride once a week they go to like a couple of shows a year they're not like super active in the barn but they ride regularly one day she the trainer decided to put this kid on a more advanced horse it was a pony she feels that the kid is more than capable of, of riding this pony however listen Yes, However, the kid saw this pony stop at a jump previously with another rider and dump the rider. And so the kid built up this fear and was terrified to ride this pony. So that what would, would you do? Yeah, that would be you. That what would you do as a trainer? What do you say? What would you say? I don't know. Basically wants to say you ride the horse I give you or you don't ride. So do you think that's an acceptable response? No. I agree with the trainer in terms of like, she only has so many horses to share. She can't disrupt her entire lesson program and schedule to accommodate one rider and their wishes. I agree with the trainer in terms of she knew and felt that this rider could handle this pony and she was there to, do, to, to coach and to direct her and to prevent her from falling. So I see her point so well, but the kid was scared and the parents felt that the, the horse wasn't a safe enough option for their kid. And that's where it gets tricky. In the olden days, trainers wielded a whip and said like, you either do what I tell you or you ride, or you don't ride. And 
kids felt obligated to follow that because they wanted to ride. So they had to like face their fears and push past things that they never would have felt comfortable pushing past. I feel like things have changed now and people are allowed to say when they're scared now. Before people didn't feel comfortable saying when they're scared. And I feel like if a child is scared, what does it hurt to spend extra time working with them? Like, why not change her to that pony on a different day and have an extra lesson? Make the parents pay for an extra lesson to help the kid get used to that pony. Have a private lesson so that the kid, have an extra private lesson so the kid can get used to the pony and build confidence on the pony. Now, the way society is set up now, I think it's way more acceptable for us to say when we feel comfortable and when we don't. Ultimately, it's the coach's decision if she wants to kick them out because they didn't blindly follow her lead. That is okay, but I want to throw another cinch into this story. What if you are riding at your school and you're completely comfortable and having a great time and then your coach asks you to do something and you don't feel comfortable? What if your coach asks you to ride in unsafe conditions? What if your coach asks you to ride a horse that you know isn't shouldn't be ridden. What if your coach asks you to do something that you know fundamentally isn't okay or safe for you? Where do we draw the line? Because I know people that that's happened to before. I know people who have been asked to ride a horse that was not safe for anybody to be to be riding. I know someone who was asked to ride in an area that wasn't safe. I, and so that's what confuses me. I think within certain limits, it is definitely, you should definitely try and push past any fears because some of us have fears and some of us don't. And all of us will go through times of having fears with horseback riding. I think it's super important to push past those fears, but I, but I think that people should also be able to draw a line. Parents and the students themselves, I think that they should not have to blindly follow if they feel their health and safety is at risk. It's a super muddled line though because everybody has a different opinion of the situation the trainer didn't think that it was unsafe the kid felt it unsafe who's right you guys comment below but if it's too long send me your stories at day by day intro at gmail.com and i will pick one and feature it in our video because i really want us to start sharing as a community and i want to hear stories like this I see both sides. Do you see both sides? Who's right? Who's wrong? I want to know. Okay, huge development in the Sophie Honey thing. <laughs> development. Huge development. So Sophie's been trying to get her to lay down, but she doesn't want to do like certain things. And But she, every time she lays down, she uh, she like gives her treats and she encourages her and she tries to get her to like used to Sophie laying with her or sitting with her. And it's working. This pony walked up to Sophie this morning and put her head and laid down at her feet. Just laid down at her feet. Wasn't trying to roll or anything, just laid down. Like, how incredible is that? Now you're all dirty, though. Yeah, now you're dirty. But I just cleaned the whole arena. It's all beautiful. So, if you're going to lay down, now's the time. Now all my dreams are coming true. I just want to put my heels on. Ruby, lay down. Down. Ruby. Ruby doesn't lay down as good. Lay down. Lay down. Down. Ruby. Down. 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 <laughs> Molly listens. No, I just need Daisy up here. I know. This is so freaking adorable. Like, I don't know. I'm just obsessed with this. Like, being able to lay beside your horse. This is one of the reasons I love getting a foal. It's because you can train them from a baby. And babies, I swear to God, they learn so much faster than an already grown up horse. Like she's so willing to learn. at the top end of being a mini she's 33 inches and the top height is usually about 34 inches for a type a miniature horse <laughs> and honey should be smaller her parents were a bit smaller <laughs> why are you down there <laughs> 
Yeah, you're almost as tall as her now. <laughs> Ruby's like, I see the cat. I see the cat. Oh, look, she's counting. One. You should teach her to count. I know, but you should turn it into counting. That was freaking adorable. I don't care who you are. That was freaking adorable. <laughs> That's adorable too. Like, it's so funny because they love each other, Ruby and Honey. We are headed to my one of my favorite places ever. And so some place that we don't go often, but we're gonna take you guys because this is one of the last times that we're gonna ever be able to go there. But before we got there, I wanted to tell you guys is it closing or something? that this is a January half. This is a trick that I do. This is a trick that I do every all the time and it's good for weight loss so I stay within 10 pounds of my weight all year long like summer every season even in the winter I go up and down within 10 pounds all the time and whenever I start to feel myself going up and the only way I can tell if I'm going up is if my clothes start to feel tight my clothes start to feel tight then I eat soup so the reason I even am saying it is because this is the soup that I made today Gabby and I love homemade chicken soup or turkey soup or whatever I make it after every holiday that we have turkey but this is chicken noodle soup I love it and every time my weight starts to go up I eat soup I make soup and I eat it like for the day that I make it and then I eat it like the next day for leftovers and then it just resets me somehow it like gets me out of craving sugar resets my system and allows me to like go back down a little bit and maintain that 10 wave 10 a pound it's even like maybe even closer to five pounds that little tiny range that I live in all the time but anyway I just thought I'd tell you guys that and now let's go and I'll show you guys where we're headed Oh no. Okay, no problem. We will take the horse. Oh no, you guys. We drove so far and there's a sign on the door and it says, sorry, I had to close early due to biz due to illness. But we found what we want. I'm gonna show you guys. As soon as we pulled up, Sam was like, I want it. Okay, so I should explain. So this is one of our favorite tax stores. It's this big old barn and it's built into a tax store. Um it's like a higher end one that is closer to us. We have to drive a bit to get here, so we hardly ever come. But they're closing! And they're having this huge sale, and you can get like so many things. Like it's, everything is like 80 and 90% off. So we really wanted to come and like see what we could get. We drove in and we saw this adorable horse. Isn't it so cute? And as soon as we drove in, look, he's tied to the thing. As soon as we drove in, Sam's like, how much is that? That's what we want, we want it. I even looked on the website and it said open. Like, what are the chances? God did not want us to spend our money. He's like, Laura, you're gonna find way too many sale things in there and you're gonna buy too much junk that you don't even need. And so. New Ogilvy saddle pad. I knew new Ogilvy saddle pad. Gabby didn't get a saddle pad for Christmas. I was hoping to find one that she would love there. Man. Blankets. And I was hoping to stock up on horse blankets because actually our horses have been really good. I want to get another one for Gracie. Hers seems too big. And oh, and I always like to have extra ones for Chino. If I can get a deal on brand new horse blankets, then I'm up for it. But this is like an hour drive for us. An hour and a half? Or an hour, one way. 45 minutes. 45 minutes one way. Don't you know that? 